But what happens when we act like the people of Sardis? Well, Bonnie and I had the privilege uh, for four years of traveling the world and speaking to actually thousands of medical missionaries. They would come to these conferences to get trained in their medical practice, and Bonnie and I were the spiritual mental health care providers. And I just want to tell you what sin can do. This jungle doctor that we met at this conference, Franklin Graham paid $5 million to build a hospital in this very desperate uh, Islamic country, uh, and this doctor built the hospital. He brought in doctors and nurses at the request of the government because there was no hospital in hundreds of miles. So they allowed a Christian hospital in a Muslim country because there was no hospital for hundreds of miles and people would be dragged there and brought on donkeys and in wheelbarrows. And the doctor's wives were Wycliffe translators. Or the nurse's husbands were Wycliffe translators. And the Islamic government knew that and they told him, as long as you don't proselytize outside your compound, and as long as you keep the hospital, we'll overlook what you're doing. And they do. That happens all over the world because they need the medical care. So this doctor had a flourishing, unreached people group ministry, which were going out, learning the languages of every tribe, coming back, translating them at the hospital, getting the Bibles, taking them back. They didn't proselytize, they just delivered them. And they would witness to all the people that came to the hospital. And it was thriving. And an American mission team from an American church that supported that doctor came and said, we'd like to paint your hospital and provide childcare for all of the doctors and nurses because you guys never get, you can go into town, have dinner, and we're going to watch the kids and kind of give you a whole week of you know, relaxation. During the week of relaxation, one of the church missions team members molested, physically molested the two-year-old daughter of this doctor. And the team left and he didn't know about it and the little girl said, bad man touch me. And the father said, bad man who touched you where? <laughs> and of course they prosecuted the guy and he was, I don't know how he got around the background check. So that happened. And he you know, went to jail, everything. But it didn't end. He got infected with bitterness. Do you know what happened? He said, God, I gave up my practice in Boston. I was making $600,000 a year 15 years ago. I gave it all up. I gave my cars, my house, my gates, my kids in private schools to come to this God-forsaken place where they hate us and deny Christ for my daughter to get molested ruiner for life I'm leaving and he did shut down the hospital told them all to go home stop your translation work it's done see that's what bitterness does he announced that and he came to the conference he had to come to the conference to officially resign with Samaritan's Purse so he's sitting there and guess what Bonnie and I were invited in. We flew in from wherever we were. And they said, you can speak on anything. I said, oh, great. I always speak on whatever I'm teaching anywhere else. And I was teaching through the Lord's Prayer where I was. And so I taught on the Lord's Prayer. What does the Lord's Prayer say? Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. You know, you know that part. You all know that. Everyone knows it. Do you know what the very next word after the Lord's Prayer is? If you don't forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you. Have you guys read that? That's the exact next two verses after the Lord's Prayer. So I was teaching on the sin of bitterness. The man is sitting there in his scrubs. You know, I love those scrubs the doctors wear. They're so cool. And stethoscope around his neck, sitting there. And this is how he sat. He had to go through the session. And after the session, he was going to go resign. So I'm projecting up on the screen. The seven signs of bitterness. I got through the first one, described it. Volatile anger, explosive anger. That's a, bitter people are just, everything makes them mad and they blow up. Uh, loss of feeling any spiritual desire. That's another uh, evidence of bitterness. By the time I'm on the third one, Dr. Dr. Bitter, 
it goes like this. And he's reading that slide. And then he goes like this, and he turns to his wife. And he, you know, there's, there are 900 other doctors and nurses in this little area in Thailand where we're teaching him. And so he whispers and mouths to his wife. He goes, is, is that me? You know, what he's saying is, is, am I bitter like that? His wife told me, she said, oh, I was paralyzed. She said, I thought, he has blown up at me and yelled at me and screamed at me and exploded at me so many times. If I look at him and say, yeah, that's you, you're ruining the ministry, you're ruining the gospel going forward, you're destroying all the lives of these people that have attached to the hospital, and, and you're making it even worse for our daughter, you're going to take her home in defeat after she was you know, molested and everything. She said, so if I say yes, he'll blow up at me. And then she sat there and said, I thought, if I don't say anything, it'll probably continue. So she turned and looked at him and said, that is you. He told me, he said, I didn't hear another word you said. I said, isn't that great? He stopped listening to me and he started listening to the Lord. That's what I hope some of you do. That, that I'll say enough about the Bible that finally it'll connect and you'll, you'll start doing something about it. He bowed his head in his little scrubs and right there and repented of his anger and bitterness and wrath and quitting and self-centeredness and everything else. And then he just begged the Lord to help him not destroy this whole ministry and asked the Lord to protect his daughter and everything else. He said his whole life changed in an, just in an instant right there, sitting in his scrubs in that chair. How did I know about this? We're walk Bonnie and I are walking after the session this big, handsome doctor in his scrubs with a stethoscope walked up and says, I didn't listen to a word you said after the third slide. I said, oh, thanks for telling me. I said, I'm used to that. Students sleep all the time in my classes. He said, no, let me tell you what happened. And he went back, and that hospital is today flourishing, and the gospel is going forth. They're still protected in that Muslim country. They're translating the Bible, and his little daughter is growing up seeing the power of the grace of God. Now sin has consequences, but no matter how many steps we take away from the Lord, it's just one beautiful step back. And we're just like that doctor, instantly as close to God as we could be.